It's a dual boiler PID machine derived from a best-selling classic with a reputation of solid performance and incredible value. Building on that legacy, this machine brings a bunch of new high performance features and smart solutions, which add up to a superior espresso experience. Hey, espresso lovers, Mark here from Whole Latte Love with an in-depth look at what we are calling the Creme One Duo V. It's one of four new machines from Creme making up their One line. Coming up, I'll have a complete look at the desirable features and capabilities of the Creme One Duo V. It can run from waterline or reservoir. Boilers can be turned off independently. It has on-off programmability seven days a week, super sexy shot mirror, SGS rating for commercial use, one push eco mode, and a whole bunch more. I'll open the hood and take you on a detailed tour of the internal components. I'll show you everything that comes in the box and finish up with my thoughts. But first, let's cover the origin of this machine. It's an important story. So I've been reviewing prosumer level espresso machines for about a decade now. I've used and been inside most every machine available in North America during that time. So I get asked a lot, hey Mark, on a price performance basis, what's the best dual boiler machine for my money? The answer, it was always easy. You'll get the most bang for your buck with an Expo Bar Brutus. Now the Brutus wasn't exactly what some would consider a beautiful machine. You know, it depends on what you like, but it was built like a tank incredibly reliable, and most important, it made espresso that was as good or better than machines costing a lot more. It got there with difference making and desirable features like a heat exchanger in the service boiler, preheating water, feeding the brew boiler, and the custom E61 group with a large pre-infusion chamber above the shower screen that you will not find on machines from other manufacturers. If you were the type looking for top performance, at a great price and likes a solid build, the Brutus was a no-brainer. So, how did we get from the Expo Bar Brutus to the Krem machines? To avoid any confusion, here's the story. Expo Bar machines were always designed by Krem in Spain. A few years ago, Krem was acquired by WellBuilt, a U.S. company based in Florida, specializing in innovating commercial-grade food service products worldwide. We here at Whole Latte Love have a long relationship with Creme Expo Bar. We in fact asked them to make a dual boiler machine for the prosumer market before they had one. That machine, yeah, it became the Brutus, which we named and it went on to be a bestseller in its class. That relationship, it continues today. Back in 2018, we visited Creme in Spain and were able to give our input on the new designs. In this clip, you can see prototypes of the new machines on the bench. Look close and you'll see that Expo Bar name. And there at the end of the bench, there it is, an Expo Bar Brutus, which inspired these new machines. Now, my apologies for potentially boring you with that background, but I do think the origin story is important. And that brings me to the first key change with the Creme 1 machines. They are all rated for commercial use. They have SGS approval, which is equivalent to an NSF rating. So you can use them commercially, but for home users, it means they passed rigorous testing and documentation assuring quality and proper performance. So the basics on the Creme 1 Duo V. It's a dual boiler, which can be plumbed direct to waterline or operated via reservoir. PID controls the temperature in both boilers, which are copper with brass end plates. And those boilers are really big. The 1.7 liter steam boiler has a heat exchanger inside, which preheats water feeding the brew boiler. And that brew boiler is about as big as they come at a massive 1.5 liters. That's double to more than triple the size of competing machines from ECM, Profitech, Rocket, and Bezzera. Larger boilers mean more consistent temperatures and fast recovery times. And related to that, the Creme 1 Duo V has an incredibly low brew boiler offset temperature. Those offsets, they typically run 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's about 16.5 degrees on this machine. I'll save the technical reasons as to why that's good for a future video, but for now, just know a lower offset means more accurate brew temps. The large surface of the drip tray is unique and great for both home and commercial use. Plus it has this trick with a removable platform for a scale or you can get a little more clearance for taller cups up to four inches. 
volume in the drip tray is large at 1.9 liters. That's good if you will not be running it to a drain line and you know, you maybe get a little lazy with emptying. If you do run the drain line, the tray is pre-drilled and set up with a collection cup underneath and comes with that drain line. A rare feature I love is the ability to drain the brew boiler. Open a valve underneath the machine and it drains into the drip tray. So it's a really good thing the tray has the capacity to handle the entire volume of the boiler. Moving up from the tray, check it out, a shot mirror. These are a lot of fun, especially if you'll be doing bottomless shots. You'll be able to see them develop without bending over. A dual manometer gives you readouts on brew pressure to the left and steam boiler pressure to the right. At the steam boiler's max 257 Fahrenheit temperature, you'll have about 1.4 bar of pressure to work with. Valves for steam and hot water are of the half turn type, so less turning to go from full open to close. The steam wand is no burn, and this machine comes stock with both two and three hole steam tips. With the drip tray's large deck, it's possible to create latte air quality froth somewhat automatically, meaning you do not have to hold the frothing pitcher. Just place this frothing pitcher, which comes with the machine, on the deck, and with a little trial and error between milk level and tip position, the milk can basically froth itself. As the froth expands with microfoam, it covers the tip, and milk continues heating. The machine comes with a dual narrow spout portafilter with an angle design for easier tamping and attachment. Three filter baskets of 7, 14, and 18 gram capacities and a blind filter for back flushing and brew pressure adjustment. The E61 Group features Krem's exclusive pre-infusion chamber located above the shower screen. It's a much loved legacy feature from Expo Bar Machines, which slows down pressure and flow buildup, giving the coffee more time to swell prior to full flow, which can reduce channeling and increase the depth of an extraction. Max brew pressure is adjustable. Prior to shipping, we bench test and set up vibe pump machines like this to a max brew pressure of 10 bar on the gauge, which results in about nine bar at the group. There's rarely a reason to change this, but you can check and adjust if you want. Using a blind filter basket, attach the port filter and lift the lever to brew position. At the back of the machine, the OPV, which controls pressure, is accessed by removing this cover. Using a flathead screwdriver, turn the OPV adjustment to set pressure. Again, we recommend setting to 10 bar on the gauge, which results in nine bar at the group. If you choose to plumb the machine, and you know, you should, because if you've been filling reservoirs, it's gonna be a life-changing experience. The plumb line attaches easily with the provided hose at the back of the machine. We include this adapter with all plumbable machines to get you from the BSP thread to US standard plumbing fittings. There's a solenoid valve on the water line input, which cuts line pressure to the machine unless the pump is operating. And the water line has a backflow preventer for SGS approval. Underneath the machine, there's a mechanical valve for selecting from plumbed or reservoir operation. Up top to the left, the water reservoir is under this cover and can be removed for filling if desired. But really, do simplify your life, plumb the machine, and have a never-ending water supply. To the right, there's a surface for cups warmed by passive heat from the boilers. Before we go for our internal tour, a look at the functions of the OLED display and control panel. There are two menu systems, the barista menu and the service menu. In the barista menu are the most commonly accessed functions. In the password protected service menu, you'll find more basic setting, things you know, you'll set once and very rarely ever change. Now, I'm not gonna go real deep into every function, but highlight a few key features and things you should know. When the machine is idle, you'll have a display of current boiler temps, an icon to the right of the temperatures indicates which boiler is currently heating. When pulling a shot, you'll get a shot timer in the display and you can set how long that time persists on completion in the barista menu. I like how the display has an upward facing angle. It mirrors the angle of the shot mirror and makes it a lot easier to view and use. The display is surrounded by four buttons. Pressing and holding the upper left button powers off the machine. Pricing again turns it back on. If eco mode is enabled, you can quickly turn that off or on by pressing the lower right button. 
When activated, this drops boiler temps to their setting in the service menu to save power. Pressing the upper right key takes you to the barista menu. From there, use the upper keys to navigate to functions like boiler temps, which display in Celsius and Fahrenheit, and then use the lower key to adjust. Very nice feature is the ability to set on and off times for each day of the week, so the machine is gonna be up to temperature and ready and waiting for you when you want it. If you will be away, you can turn these off globally when needed. I do want to cover one setting in the service menu to select between using the reservoir or plumb setting. To get into the service menu, press and hold the upper left button until off appears in the display. Then press the upper right button and enter the password, which is 111, unless you've changed it. You only have to enter the first one and it auto fills the next two. From there, use the arrow keys and navigate to the reservoir icon. Then use the up and down buttons. If using water from reservoir, set this to the check mark. If using the plumb connection, set this to X, which disables level sensing in the reservoir. And don't forget to set the valve under the machine to your water source. With that, let's go over to the lab for a tour and appraisal of the internal components. This really is one of my favorite things to do is to give you an internal tour of the machine so you know what's under the hood. Uh, first of all, you know, I always love the uh, Expo Bar Brutus machines made by Krem. Um, they were so easy to get into. It used to be just three screws and a Brutus to get this cover off. It's a couple more now, uh, but all you need is a flat head and a Phillips head. And these guys right here, um, a few up top that hold on this section come off. And then you only need to take two off of the actual case of the machine here uh, to get inside. So that's really easy. Now, when you look at this machine, one of the first things we're going to notice is a little break from what you're used to maybe seeing inside a machine. It's built on this super thick polycarbonate base. Um, again, a little break with tradition, but this is where things are going, in my opinion. Um, the thing with this is, you know, we've delivered tens of thousands of machines, and what happens is a lot of times in the you know, metal frame is the drip tray supports will be welded on. The UPS guy goes and drops that on your uh, doorstep, and they end up bending. Um, this polycarbonate base flexes. Um, so that's not going to happen. Um, also, a couple other things about this. It's a full, it pretty much covers the entire bottom without seams here, which really helps hold in any noise. So these are very quiet machines. Uh, really like that. From an engineering side of things, it allows the designers to really place components internally within the machine very, very accurately. We'll also notice, uh, something I didn't talk in the video yet, um, the feet are adjustable, so you can turn these out, and you know, if you get a little tippy on your countertop, you notice one spout's delivering more than the other, you can adjust that, so really nice. Um, Notice over here, I do have my machine plumbed in right now. I'm running on uh, 40 PSI. That's uh, just a little under three bar of pressure. The uh, pressure rate, I believe, is two to six bars on the inlet side here. Um, right over above that, we do have the adjustable OPV that is accessible through this little hole here. It's got a little cover on it. Uh, when you get the machine, you can take that off. Then you can get in, use your screwdriver to adjust the OPV, which is going to change your brew pressure. Um, we set these at 10 bar on the machine gauge with a blind filter inserted. Um, that gets you generally nine bar at the group on a vibration pump machine like this. And up top here, we've got the brains. I like that these are you know, kind of off and separated, not down low and away from you know, any chance of getting wet here. Notice there is a battery in here. You can set time and date on this machine as we saw. Um, so this is gonna retain all that information. You know, if you're gonna have that machine come on from you automatically every morning, that's really nice. Um, on the water input side, there is a solenoid valve right here. Um, so this only opens up to outside pressure, this valve, when the pump is actually running. And that's kind of a safety thing. Should anything go catastrophically wrong inside the machine, you're not going to have a flood because this valve will be closed unless the pump is running. So we like that. Now let's take a look at these massive, massive boilers and something that started with the Brutus that we were involved in again. Um, first, the steam boiler, 1.7 liters right here. It's got this nice insulating jacket on here. But the key thing here, that holdover, is the heat exchanger that's inside this boiler, which is going to feed the brew boiler. So what happens is water that gets water delivered to the brew boiler comes through this tube, but it's running through a heat exchanger inside. 
So that water comes in, runs through a heat exchanger, then out to the brew boiler. Um, so it's preheated when it goes in the brew boiler. So you're never dumping cold water into the brew boiler. I mean, you could if you turn this boiler off. Uh, most people won't do that. It, you can if you want, um, as, we'll, as we saw. Uh, but it is preheated so long as this boiler is running. Up on top of this boiler, oh, let's talk about the brew boiler just real quick because this is incredibly massive. This is a big boiler. This, as far as a brew boiler, at 1.5 liter is two to three times the size of what you're going to find in competing machines. So between this water being preheated and the incredibly large volume in this boiler, it really all adds up to very, very accurate brew temperatures. All right, so up top on here, uh, we've got typical things we see on these. We've got a vacuum relief valve right here. I'm gonna push that a little. Again, my machine is on and hot. So what happens is when the machine heats up to boiling and it creates enough steam in there, that valve closes. When it cools back down, it opens up to outside air pressure to relieve any vacuum. Um, over here, we have the PID probe. That's uh, so you get accurate temperatures. Over here, we have the fill probe. Um, this in the service uh, menu, you can adjust the sensitivity here of this probe. Generally, most people are never ever going to have to do that. Uh, but if you had like really super soft water, um, you can make that probe more sensitive. Over here, so coming off that same connection um, for the vacuum relief, we got a line. This line right here is going to run out to your steam boiler pressure gauge. This right here, it's gonna, we got some T action going on here. Um, this line is gonna go to a safety valve. Normally the safety valves, we see them right on top of the boiler here. And often they're, they're open so that if it was to go, it's highly unlikely that would ever happen, but if it goes, it spews all the water inside. What they did here is they took that safety valve, they ran this tube over here and the safety valve is right here underneath this, I believe it's a rubber casing. Then this tube, it goes down to the drip tray. So if it should go, all your water from that is gonna end up in the drip tray. Um, it comes through a little, little guy up front here. It's really hard to see, but there's a little opening up in here that routes it all right to the drip tray. Another really cool thing um, is you can drain this brew boiler. So there is, and I can tilt this up and show you, underneath the machine, we do have the boiler drain valve. And that pump just came on because of fill level probe because I tipped the machine, thought it was out of water. So we can do uh, drain the brew uh, boiler right here. And that is routed, so it's gonna end up in the drip tray as well. All right, so back up on top of the brew boiler. Again, we're feeding that from, with preheated water from the service boiler. Then this line here runs out to the group. And then there's a second line, kind of hard to see down in there, that runs back out of the group down to the bottom of the boiler. And if you know E61s, you know what I'm going to talk about here. The thermo siphon is constantly, when the machine's just idle, circulating hot water out to the group here, then back out of that second lower tube to the bottom of the boiler. So you're getting a constant cycle of hot water out to the group. Now, one thing, you know, I did mention, I think, that uh, one of the lowest boiler offsets. So that always in these machines, the water that's actually in here is hotter than what you get at the group. Oftentimes, it's a 20 to 30 degree Fahrenheit offset. One of the lowest offsets I've ever seen on a machine is just 16 and a half degrees Fahrenheit, I believe. Um, offset from what's in the boiler to what you get at the group. Um, that low offset, you know, there's technical reasons for this. I'll just say it gets you better, more consistent brew temperatures, so that's awesome. Now, I'm running plumbed, as mentioned, but here's the water reservoir over here. Um, we've got the frame off here, so it comes out a little giddy. But uh, nice and large if you're gonna run from reservoir. Over here inside that housing, this is a capacitive sensor that senses the amount of water in the reservoir. So it'll let you know when to fill. Um, and you can't set this machine up so it continues. Even if you run out of water, it will continue brewing for a certain number of seconds. Um, also on here, you'll notice this little switch which senses the presence, little roller switch right here. So there's a little clip on the reservoir here uh, when you insert it, and you do want to leave this in the machine so that sensor hits, um, clicks that switch so the machine knows the reservoir is there and ready to go. Um, so that's kind of the tour. I mean, we'll take a, another quick look at, at things here. Um, I think we talked about, you know, here's your steam comes over this way. Uh, hot water comes off the bottom of the service boiler here and to this valve. 
So really nice internals on this machine. I do like this really heavy duty polycarbonate frame. It's gonna flex, not bend permanently. That's a good thing. It's also gonna contain noise. All right, let's go back over, see what comes in the box and some of my final thoughts on the machine. I really do like going through the internals of machines. A lot of little extras inside this one to get the commercial ratings. So what comes with the Krem 1 Duo V? In the box is the dual spout portafilter, seven 14 and 18 gram filter baskets, plus a blind filter, a real live usable tamper, that's rare, two hole and three hole steam tips to fit your preference, a milk frothing pitcher, also relatively rare, a group brush and Urnex back flush tablets, and plumbing and drain lines for the machine. Overall, a lot of extras you do not get with other machines. So my final thoughts, there's a special place in my heart for the Expo Bar Brutus machines. The Krem 1 Duo V retains legacy features that made the Brutus great, like the brew water preheating and custom E61 group pre-infusion chamber and adds a lot of features like a more contemporary look, the shot mirror, very deep control of the machine through the barista and service menus, and of course the commercial rating. Really a lot to like here and honestly, I'm loving it. That's the Krem 1 Duo V. It's available now from Whole Lot They Love. As always, if you have questions, use those comments and I'll get you answers. I'm Mark, if you like this stuff, be sure and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll come back soon for more of the best on everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.